Hi friends, I am here to discuss the environmental science question which is asked in your uh, UPSC preliminary examination 2019. There were around 16 questions from environmental science and out of that more than 10 questions were based on current affairs. Okay, so last year also we said that the importance of current affairs is increasing in UPSC examination, right. So here the first question is regarding the bamboo, bamboo trees, right. So that was also a current affair. So let us discuss the question. Consider the following statements. First statement, as per a recent amendment to the Indian Forest Act 1927, forest dwellers have the right to fell the bamboos grown on forest areas. Now, this was in current affair regarding the bamboo was excluded from the definition of tree under this Indian Forest Act 1927. So, bamboo was included in the tree definition under this act and it was having protection. But in order to improve the livelihoods of uh, forest dwelling peoples, okay, so the definition of tree was excluded or removed from the definition under the Indian Forest Act. Thereby, the farmers can cut the bamboo trees. But there is a provision that the definition of tree, okay, that is removed from the non forested areas, not from the forest areas. So the parliament passes the bill to exclude bamboo from the definition of tree under the Indian Forest Act. Okay. So that ordinance of the government exempt the bamboo grown in non forest areas from definition of tree. So it specifically says that excluding or removing the tree from the definition from the non forest areas, not in the forest areas. Right. So why they done this? They are claiming that that will improve the earnings of tribal and dollars living around forest. Right. So just go through the first statement. As per the recent amendment to the Indian Forest Act, forest dwellers have the right to fell the bamboos grown on forest areas. That is a wrong statement because the ordinance says that uh, it is not in the forest areas, it is in the non forest areas. Okay, so the, they can cut the or the other peoples or the forest dwellers, they can cut the bamboo from the non forested areas in order to improve their earnings. Okay, so that is why first statement is wrong. If the first statement is wrong, we can eliminate A and D. So, we eliminated A and D. So, remaining is B and C. Okay. By that, we come to know that third statement is correct. B and C is having 3 in there. So, we only need to go for the second statement. Right. Now, the second state statement is regarding Forest Rights Act 2006. Okay. Now, we know that in order to empower the forest dwelling peoples or in order to empower the Grama Sabha, we are having uh, Forest Rights Act 2006, okay. And under that, the forest dwellers or the tribals, they are given the rights by community forest right, community resource right, forest resource right and individual forest right. So, the people are or the forest dwellers are given rights under the individual forest rights, community forest rights and community forest resource right. By these three rights, the people and the Grama Sabha are empowered to use, collect and honor the forested areas and also to manage the forested areas. Okay. So, whatever the things come to the that means minus forest produce that can also managed by the or, or owned by the peoples there and that is defined under the Forest Right Act. Okay. Now, second statement, just go through the second statement. As per the scheduled tribes and other tradition forest dwellers recognition of Forest Right Act 2006, Bamboo is a minor forest produce. So, we said that minor forest produce can be owned by or collected and used by the peoples there because the FRA empowers them to do so, right. And under that act and this bamboo, it is a minor forest produce and bamboo is also defined as a minor forest produce under this FRA act. So, Forest Right Act of 2006 recognized bamboo as a minor forest produce and best the rights of ownership, access to collect, use and it dispose the minor forest produce with the scheduled tribes and traditional forest dollars. Okay. So, that is why second statement is correct statement. So, we got the answer as B, 2 and 3. Okay. So, the answer for this question is B, 2 and 3. Now, the third statement, we already said that it is correct. Just go through the statement. The scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dollars recognition of forest right act allows ownership of minor forest produce to forest dollars. So, we said that uh, individual forest right is there, community forest right is there, there and community forest resource right is there. By these three rights, the people and the Grama Sabha is empowered to manage and use this uh, forest and forest producers. Okay. And this was a current affair. 
right removal of bamboo from the uh, definition of tree that was a recent current affair based on that they asked this question now in our model question also we made a question regarding this removal of bamboo from the definition of tree so you can see that question here okay so from that question and its explanation you might be able to know the first statement of this upsc question is wrong okay now coming to the second question consider the following statements first one asiatic lion is naturally found in india only second double humped camel is naturally found in india only and third one horned rhinoceros is naturally found in india only now this question is also based on current affair so recently some lions were died in the gir national park due to a canine distemper virus okay based on that there were lots of news regarding uh, lions and within that news it was also mentioning that gir lions are naturally found in the gir national or gir forest only okay in the world itself the gir lion or asiatic lion is naturally exist only in the gir forest areas in gujarat okay so that was a current affair so that's why first statement is correct okay and also in our model test 2 we also made a question based on asiatic lion in that first statement was the big cat population in gir gujarat is the last of asiatic lions in the wild so we made a question like that statement like that so by that we come to know that first statement of upsc question is correct thereby we eliminated b okay now second statement double humped camel is naturally found in india only and that was also current affair and there was a news related to uh, news saying about two camels in india right one uh, one humped camel and double humped camel one humped camel you can see that in the hot deserts in thar region or in rajasthan region right and this double humped camel that's a camel adapted to cold mountain regions okay mainly in ladakh region right so that news was saying about some decline of operation of this uh, double humped camels right so based on that it was also in the news and that news were also comparing these two uh, camels called uh, one humped camel and double humped camel so if you were reading that news you might be able to know that this double humped camel it is there in india in ladakh region and some population is only there in this india in ladakh region but most of the others are seen in mongolia gobi like that regions okay so this double humped camel it is found in mongolia china kazakhstan turkmenistan uzbekistan afghanistan all this region is having double humped camels because it is found in the cold adapted regions cold mountains or cold regions okay so that's why second statement is wrong now coming to third statement one horned rhinoceros is naturally found in india only now that was also current affair okay regarding the rhinoceros we know that india is having a uh, largest number of what uh, one horned rhinoceros population and one third of the popula world population of rhinoceros is there in kasiranga also okay so that's why we know that india is having one horned rhinos and last year due to the fl floods in this uh, some tributaries of ganga river some rhinoceros from valmiki national park was moved to nepal nepal's royal chitwa national park and that was a current affair okay so if you are transferring this uh, one horned rhino from valmiki to nepal that means nepal is also having a viable population of rhinoceros there okay so that was a current affair so you might be able to know that nepal is also having a rhino population okay so that's why third statement is also wrong okay so second statement and third statement is wrong we got the answer as a1 only so a1 only is the answer so these three were in use last year okay now the third question is regarding a pollutant called as microbeads microbeads or we can call it as microplastics okay now the question is like this why is there a great concern about the microbeads that are released into environment first statement they are considered harmful to marine ecosystems they are considered to cause skin cancer in children they are small enough to be absorbed by crow plants in irrigated fields they are often found to be used as food adulterants okay now we also made a question in our prelims model test 8 within that we made a question regarding microplastics and also uh, microbeads also we know that 
micro bits are a kind of micro plastics and there are tiny bits of plastics okay and that will leads to that will carried by the surface runoff to the nearest nearest water bodies okay and within the water bodies there are lots of algae or phytoplankton are there and they are uh, confusing or these kinds of organs which are living in the aquatic ecosystem they are confusing that tiny bits of particles for their food thereby they are eating that tiny bits of plastics called microbes thereby that is altering the or that is affecting the aquatic food chain okay so thereby it is affecting the marine ecosystems or aquatic ecosystem so our answer for this question is a they are considered harmful to marine ecosystem obviously it is also danger for some other regions land areas also but it is mainly affecting the aquatic food chain because these kinds of tiny bits of particles are ultimately carried to the uh, aquatic ecosystems through the drainage system through the uh, what surface runoff like that okay so the answer for this question is a and that this was also current affair microbits there was lots of studies on going on the uh, impacts or the effects of microplast microplastics and microbits on the aquatic ecosystem on the other living beings on the environment also okay so that's why it was also there in news and there were also some studies regarding the presence of microplastics or microbits in the groundwater bottled water and tap water also based on that also it was in news right now the next question is regarding some species so question is like this some species of turtles are herbivores so obviously we know that turtles are aquatic animals right so turtles since they are in aquatic region there will be most of them will be carnivores but there are phytoplankton are there then corals are there right algae are there sea grasses are there so this fishes and turtles most of the species which are residing in the uh, aquatic biome it will be having most of them will be having herbivorous diet and also carnivorous diet and also omnivorous diets right so some turtles are most of the turtles are in carnivorous nature for example olive ridley turtles olive ridley turtles they are carnivorous in nature right but some turtles are there in which are having herbivorous in nature so that's why first statement is correct so that's a st general statement they are saying that some species of turtles are herbivores so that means that's a general statement they are not saying that the turtles are only having herbivores nature if you, if they are saying that like that is wrong statement but they are saying that some species of turtles are herbivores that means it's a general statement that's why it's a correct statement so the diet varies with the species sea turtles may may be carnivores in nature herbivores in nature and also omnivores in nature right so that's why first statement we can consider it as correct so we eliminated b and c we eliminated b and c now basically some species of fish are herbivores in nature so it might be seen that in a, in our aquariums or in aquatic biomes aquatic ecosystem for example in ponds and like that these fishes will be eating on the phytoplankton or algae which are which are stick on the uh, grounds or which are stick on the gravels or uh, like that things right or rocks like that things so that's why fishes are there in herbivorous nature or also also it, uh, it is also there in the carnivorous in nature okay so second statement is correct so we got the answer as d 1 2 3 and 4 because we already eliminated b and c and we now eliminated a because we know the second statement is correct right so we got the answer as d 1 2 3 and 4 if you don't know the second statement just go through the first statement so the third statement some species of marine mammals are herbivores now there was a question in 2016 on a uh, question based on a species called as degong right so that question was saying that it's a aquatic mammal it's a herbivorous aquatic mammal right so this degong is a mammal right and that's a herbivorous mammal so that's why we know that third statement is correct some species of marine mammals are herbivores okay so this degong is a herbivorous animal so that's why herbivorous is a mammal also so we, we know that third statement is correct right or we can go for the fourth statement so if you know the third statement we will get the answer and just go through the fourth statement some species of snakes are viviparous now we know that there are some species of snakes which are in viviparous nature like the vipers viper is a species which is having 
we parents nurture them. That means they will give birth to the young ones. Most of the uh, snakes are having oviparous, but some species are viviparous like the vipers. Now, based on this behavior of snakes, we also made a question in our prelims model test too. And that question was saying, a second statement of that question was saying, all snakes are oviparous. And that statement was a wrong statement in our test. Right. Uh, that question was saying like this, snakes are always at the end of the food chain. And second statement, all snakes are oviparous. And the answer for that question was D, neither one nor two. So, thereby we will be knowing that some species, uh, snakes are also having oviparous and viviparous nature. So, that's why we will get the answer as D again. Okay. So, if you know the one, two, one and two or the one and four statements, we will get the answer in this question. Right. So, the answer for this question is D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. All statements are correct. Now, next is a question regarding some animals and where it is found. Right. Where it is naturally found. And this question was also based on current animals. Okay. So, you can see blue finned marseal and they are saying that it is found in Kaveri river. And now, this was a current affair because blue finned marseal or humbacked marseal. Right. That was listed as a critical endangered category right it was listed as a critical endangered category by IUCN that's why it was there in news and some groups of researchers scientists they also came to the Kaveri river in order to study about the population of this uh, uh, mousir fish okay so that's why because of these two reasons it was in news right and Within that news, it was also saying that Kaveri River, Kaveri River in South India is having this blue finned marseal. And mainly its uh, tributaries like Pambar, Kabini, ba Bhavani rivers. These tributaries of Kaveri like Pambar, Kabini and Bhavani is having the population of this marseal. Okay, so that's why we will know that first pair is correct. So this marseal actually it's a freshwater, so it is found in river that means it's a freshwater uh, fish and it is called as the tiger of the water. Okay, now first time, first pair is correct. We eliminate uh, B. Now the second pair, Irrawaddy dolphin. They have given it as Chambal River, right? Now this actually this Irrawaddy dolphins. They are distributed in the shallow or near shore tropical and subtropical marine waters. Okay, and but there are some population which are residing in the uh, river systems also. Right, for example, in Sundarbans vicinity, in the Sundarbans rivers also we can see this. Uh, Irrawaddy dolphins. But mainly this Irrawaddy dolphins are seen in the Indonesian region, Borneo region, then Myanmar region, then Mekong Delta region, Cambodia and Vietnam. These regions is having mainly Irrawaddy dolphins. And India also we are having some population of this Irrawaddy dolphins and that is found in Sundarbans region. In the rivers of Sundarbans we can see this Irrawaddy dolphin and also we can see this uh, Irrawaddy dolphin in the Chilika lake. Okay, so these are the places where we can see the river dolphins mainly in India. So, we also discussed that in our class also, right. So, that's why we come to know that river dolphin is not found in Chambal river. Chambal, we know that it's an inland river. It's a, uh, Chambal is a tributary of Yamuna and Yamuna is a tributary of what we call as Ganga river, right. So, that's why river dolphin, it is not a, not found in the Chambal river because it's an inland river. It is not having uh, connection with the marines. It is not nearby the marines, right? And Chambal, you know that it is flowing through Madhya Pradesh, like that region. Okay. Madhya Pradesh uh, and uh, Rajasthan region. Chambal River is there, right? So that's why second pair is wrong because Irrawaddy dolphin, it is found in Chilika Lake in India and also in Sundarbans rivers. Okay. So second pair is wrong. So that's why we go on at the answer as C. So if you know that Irrawaddy dolphin is not found in Chambal River, then we can eliminate A, B and D also. Simply we will get the answer C, 1 and 3. Okay. If you know that one fact. Now just go to the third statement. So we got the answer. Right. But just go through the third pair. Rusty spotted cat and eastern guards. Rusty spotted cat. It was also there in news. It was also a current affair. Actually this rusty spotted cat. That are the smallest uh, wild cats in the world. Okay. Now, why this was a news means, this Sanjay Gandhi National Park, we know that it is in Maharashtra, right? So, Sanjay Gandhi National Park, they take help from the, from the experts from the UK. They take help from the experts of UK to breed the uh, wild cats. 
smallest wild cat called as rusty spotted cat based on that it was in news right and within that news it, they are also saying they were also saying that it is mainly found in the eastern Ghat region in Andhra Pradesh okay so the rusty spotted cat one of the few wild cats that inhibit the forest of Andhra Pradesh is among the animals in the eastern Ghats that need more research support right and that was there this were some points which is mentioned in that news both the tigers and rusty spotted cats inhibit the Nagarjuna Sagar Sushar and Tiger Reserve in Andhra Pradesh and endemic to India and Sri Lanka and the areas along the Indo-Nepal border, the rusty spotted cats are the smallest wild cat species in the world protected under, under the schedule 1 of the wildlife protection in 1972. So, these were some points which was mentioned in that news. So, you might be knowing that it is endemic to India and mainly to the and it is mainly found in the Andhra Pradesh region, region in Eastern Ghats. Okay. So, that is why third is also correct. So, basically we got the answer earlier. Okay. So, the answer for this question is C 1 and 3. Now, regarding this, we, we also made a question regarding Irrawaddy Dolphin. Within that question, we also said that it is an aquatic mammal found in estuaries and mangrove areas with freshwater population occurring in river systems. Second statement, it is not found naturally in India and third, it is given legal protection like that statement. And now, for that question, the answer is C1 and 3, right. And there, within that explanation of that question, we said that Irrawaddy Dolphin is found in the Chilika Lake of India, thereby and also some rivers also. I like the some rivers in some rivers like that. So, thereby we will be knowing that Irrawaddy Dolphin is not found out in the Chambal River. So, we can easily eliminate this question, right. Now, next question is regarding extended producer responsibility and that was also Karnataka. In India, extended producer responsibility was introduced as an important feature in which of the following. First, the biomedical waste management and handling rules 1998, the recy recycled plastic Manufacturing and Reusage Rules 1999, the E-Waste Management and Handling Rules 2011, the Food Safety and Ex Standards Rules 2011. So, actually why it was in use means, uh, by the recent uh, Plastic Waste Management Rules 2016, this Extended Producer Responsibility was there in use. So, Extended Producer Responsibility, shortly we can call it as EPR, that was a recent feature of this Plastic Waste Management Rules 2016, right. But this plastic waste management rules not introduced with EPR in India. EPR was introduced in India by the e waste management and handling rules 2011. Why they asked you this question? Because it was in news related to plastic waste rules 2016. Okay. So the e waste management and handling rules 2011 introduced the concept of EPR for the first time in India, which made all the producers of electronic goods responsible for the waste production management. Okay. So, e-waste rules introduced EPR concept in India, right. So, EPR policy finds place in plastic waste management rules 2016 and e-waste management rules 2016. So, now both this plastic waste management and e-waste management rules 2016 is having the concept called as ex extended producer's responsibility. That means, those who produce the goods have the responsibility to reduce the impact of that uh, what goods, okay. Now, the answer for that question is C. Now, next question is regarding CAMBA bill or CAMBA act, right. As per the law, the compensatory afforestation fund management and planning authority exists as both national and state levels. And second statement, people's participation is mandatory in the compensatory afforestation program carried out under the compensatory afforestation fund act 2016. Okay. So, actually, we are having a fund called as compensatory afforestation fund since 2000. Uh, two onwards like that. Okay. So, actually what this CAMBA fund means, uh, some entrepreneurs, they will be causing some harm to the environment and they will be giving some money to the government for the impacts or the degradation they have caused to the environment. Right. So, that is, they are giving that as a compensation for the uh, degraded environment. Right. And in order to utilize that uh, compensatory fund, and an authority was formed called as CAMBA authority in 2002, but it was not working properly, right. So, that is why in 2016 CAMBA fund act, okay, CAMBA fund act 2016 was established, enacted and by that, that act is saying that from the national level and state level we are having two authorities, a national level CAMBA authority is there, a state level CAMBA authority is there and both are vested with some powers, okay and both will be having some uh, ratio of dividing of these funds, 
right so this compensatory afforestation fund bill 2015 establishes the fund for compensatory afforestation and forest conservation okay and the caf bill proposes to set up the compensatory afforestation fund management and planning authority that will administer an accumulated corpus that has over the years collected money from several projects that have diverted forest land for infrastructure development projects okay that is what we call as camba fund right so the money would be used to regenerate forest and specified conservation activities only and this bill provides a mechanism both at the center and the states to utilize and manage growing and massive national fund towards afforestation for that the bill establishes the national compensatory afforestation fund under the public account of india and state compensatory afforestation fund under the public account of each state so a national compensatory fund is there and a state compensatory afforestation fund is there so that's why the first statement is correct as per the law camba authority exists at the both national and state levels okay first statement is correct now second people's participation is mandatory in the compensatory afforestation programs carried out under the camba act 2016 so there you can see a word called mandatory so people's participation is not mandatory in this cam uh, what regeneration process okay they can be participated so the act says that the activities for the forest wildlife forest and wildlife management set in the camba fund over forest land under the control of state forest department and being managed as per the working plan with participation of local people shall be taken up in the consultation with the grama sabha or one uh, one samrakshan samiti okay so by that it is saying that participation of people can be there but it is not mentioning about the mandatory status okay so that's why second statement is wrong so the answer for this question is a one only now next question is regarding ep act environment protection act 1986 first statement the environment protection act 1986 empowers the government of india to state the requirement of public participation in the process of environment protection and the procedure and manner in which it is sought so first statement is wrong because environment protection act 1986 now where it is mentioning about the public participation within that act if you are going through the act notification of the act you cannot find any word keyword called public participation there okay so that's why first statement is wrong right and second statement it empowers the government of india to lay down the standards for emission or degrade em emission or discharge of nm pollutants from various sources so that's a correct statement so actually is nm protection and 86 why it was enacted in order to protect the environment right mainly from this kind of pollution activities like that right so that's why uh, this second statement is there in ep act you can see here the government of uh, this act is empower the government of india or the central government on this following measures like coordination of actions by the state governments officers and authorities okay planning and execution of non uh, national wide program for prevention and control and abatement of environmental pollution then laying down standards for the quality of environment in its various aspects then laying down standards for emission or discharge of environmental pollutants from various sources what uh, whatsoever like that these are some uh, measures which has been vested with the central government under this ep act okay these are just three to four points only there are lots of others also right but nowhere in that act it is mentioning about the public participation so that's why and for this question is b two only now next question is regarding soil waste management rules 2016 now this was current affair in 2016 now first statement waste generator has to segregate waste into five categories actually if you have read that news articles related to waste management rules 2016 that act or that news us or that articles was saying that these wastes are waste should be uh, segregated in three streams okay for example biodegradable dry and domestic hazardous waste so these are the three segregation of waste which is mentioned under this solid waste management rules 2016 okay only three are there right so segregation of waste into three streams they are mentioning biodegradables dry dry will be uh, consisting of plastic paper metal wood etc and third one is domestic hazardous waste like the diapers napkins mosquito repellents cleaning agents etc okay like that there are three streams of waste right so that's why first statement is wrong okay a is wrong now coming to b the rules are applicable to notified urban local bodies 
uh, notified towns and all industrial towns only, townships only. So, you can see there are a keyword there only, right. So, they are saying that only these regions, these rules are apply, applicable, but it is not like that. There are lots of other areas also, this rule is applicable. For example, the new rules are now applicable beyond municipal areas and have included urban agglomerations, uh, census towns, notified industrial townships, areas under the control of Indian railways, airports, special economic zones, places of pilgrimage, religious and historical importance and state and central government organization in their ambit like that. So, there are lots of areas where these rules are applicable. Okay. So, that is why B is also wrong. Now, C. The rules provide for exact and elaborate criteria for the identification of sites for landfills and waste process processing facilities. So, that is a correct statement regarding solid waste management rules 2016. So, in order to answer this question, you have to read that articles, articles related to solid waste management rules, then only you can answer this question. So, that was also a current affair, right. So, answer, so, C is correct, ok. So, you can see here, waste processing facilities will have to be set up by all local bodies having a population of 1 million or more within 2 years. Okay, that is the criteria. Then for census towns with a population below 1 million or fall, all local bodies having a population of 0.5 million or more or standalone sanitary lands will, will have to be set up in 3 years time. Okay. Also, regional sanitary landfills to be set up all local bodies and census towns with a population of population under 0.5 million will have to be completed in 3 years. So, these are some criteria they are saying about the landfills and waste processing facilities. So, answer for this question is C. Now, just if you do not know the C uh, and answer C, just go through the D also. It is mandatory on the part of waste generator that the waste generator in one district cannot be moved to another district. That is wrong because it can be moved to another also. If the uh, one district is not having any facility or if, if it is not working like that, it can be moved to other others also, right. So, it is not mandatory also. So, you can see the word here mandatory, right. It is not mandatory like that. So, that is why you can eliminate D also. So, answer for this question is C. Now, 10th question is regarding also current affair, but it was in 2 years back, right. Regarding the Agastimale bias reserve. So, Agastimale was declared as a bias reserve in 2016, right. It was declared as, not, not declared as a bias reserve, it was declared as, it was included in the world network in 2016, right. Agastya was included as included in the world network of biosphere reserve in 2016. That was the current affair in 2016. And recently, last year also it was in news Agastya because uh, the wom women were allowed to enter the forests of Agastya Mala biosphere reserve, right? Because there is a pilgrim center in Agastya Mala, right? So the now the uh, women can also go there, right? Based on the Agastya Mala biosphere reserve, right? So, they are saying that within the Agastya Mala Bias Reserve, which water the core zone or water the national parks and wildlife sanctuaries, which we can see within this Agastya Mala Bias Reserve. So, within the Agastya Mala Bias Reserve, what we can see is the ER wildlife sanctuary is there, Pepara wildlife sanctuary is there, Chandrani wildlife sanctuary is there, Kalakad wildlife sanctuary is there, Mundandurai wildlife sanctuary is there, and Kalakad and Mundandurai. These two together we can we will be having Kalakad and Mundandurai tiger reserve also. So, these are the core zones or these are the protected areas within the Agastya Mala Bias Reserve. So, the answer for this question will be A. Nayar, Pepara, Shintani, Valley, Sanjari, Sandy, Kalakada, Mutandari, Tiger Reserve. These are within this Agastya Mala Bias Reserve. Okay. So, the answer for the 10th uh, answer for this question is A. So, this was also current affair. Recently, it was in current affair because of the entry of women into, into the Agastya Mala, uh, there is uh, Agastya Mala temple there. Right. There is, there is a temple of uh, Agastya Muni and it was there in news two years back based on the introduction or inclusion of Agasimala into the world network of UNESCO's MAB program. UNESCO's MAB is biosphere program. Now, next question is regarding pollutants. Okay. Carbon monoxide, methane, ozone, sulfur dioxide. Which of the above are leased into atmosphere due to the burning of crop or biomass residue? So, obviously, carbon monoxide will be knowing that and sulfur dioxide also will know that. By the burning of biomass, carbon monoxide will be there, carbon dioxide will be there, sulfur oxides will be there, nitrous oxides will be there, right. But the confusion is between ozone and methane, okay. Actually, 
we know that ozone ozone is found in the stratosphere but there are down level ozones are there which are formed because of the reaction between nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds so when this nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds reacts in the sunlight that will produce ground level ozone okay and these oxides nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds these two are produced because of the biomass burning or due to the agriculture residue burning okay so that's why ozone will be there right ozone is not directly released by the burning but it is indirectly being introduced how because nitrous oxides and volatile organic compounds are produced because of the uh, crop or agriculture residue mass agriculture residue burning or biomass residue burning so by that that will interact with this nitrogen oxides and uh, volatile organic compounds will interact with interact each other within the presence of sunlight and that will result in production of ground level ozone so if you know the first fourth and third you will get the answer d okay then go for the methane also methane is also a pollutant which is produced by this burning of agriculture residue and that's a greenhouse gas also so this was also news some studies were ongoing based on the impact of this agriculture residue burning on the greenhouse effect and also on the pollution based on that there were some researches and there were some uh, international journals journals also based on that okay so that's why it was in news now agriculture crop residue burning contribute towards the emission of greenhouse gases like the carbon dioxide nitrous oxides and methane and air pollutants like carbon monoxide uh, and, uh, ammonia nitrous oxide then sulfur oxide non methane hydraulic uh, sorry hydrocarbons volatile organic compounds then particulate matter smoke these are the uh, pollutants which is added to the atmosphere by the burning of agriculture residue right so that's why answer for this 11th question is d 1 2 3 and 4 now next is question is regarding the ramsar convention so first statement under the ramsar convention it is mandatory on the part of government of india to protect and to conserve all the wetlands in the territory of india so if you go through the this whole question paper you can see that most of the question which is using the word mandatory is wrong okay so this statement is also saying about the mandatory word right so we can consider it as wrong but as the concept proceeds you can see this conserve all the wetlands in the territory of india that is a wrong statement right because under the ramsar convention only the wetlands of international importance or the ramsar sites are protected or conserved right so we are only having 27 ramsar sites recently uh, this uh, sundarbans was included in the ramsar list thereby we will be knowing that under the ramsar convention ramsar sites are protected not all the wetlands in the territory of india okay so that's why first statement is wrong right so if the first statement is wrong we will get the answer as uh, we can eliminate a and d okay we will eliminate a and d by that we come to know that third statement is correct because c and b is having 3 in there that means third statement just go through third statement the wetlands rules 2010 also encompasses the drainage area or catchment regions of the wetlands as determined by the authority so that's a correct statement right under this national wetland conservation program okay the activities like the survey demarcation and afforestation catchment area treatment water management protection measures fisheries development these kinds of things are there okay that's why third statement is correct right now the confusion is second statement the wetlands rules 2010 were framed by the government of india based on the recommendations of ramsar convention actually now were it is mentioning that uh, the wetlands rules 2010 is framed based on the recommendations of ramsar convention now, now it is mentioning like that right under under this rule also under the wetland conser uh, wetlands conservation and management rule 2010 also it is not mentioning about the recommendation of ramsar convention okay so that's why we can consider the answer as c3 only so what is there in the official sites regarding the wetland conservation rules is the ministry of environment and forest notified the wetland conservation and management rules 2010 these rules have been drafted by ministry to ensure better conservation and management and to prevent de degradation of existing wetlands in india okay but it is not mentioning about the recommendations of ramsar convention okay 
but within that role wetland conservation and management role 2010 it is mentioning about Ramsar convention it is saying the word Ramsar convention and Ramsar sites but it is not saying about the recommendations of Ramsar convention okay so that's why we can consider the answer as C 3 only now next question is regarding hydrogen industry CNG and this was also current affair okay why it was in news means the Indian Oil Corporation Limited IOCL right IOCL they have conducted so many researches on the blending of this hydrogen into the CNG in order to improve the fuel efficiency like that things and also in order to reduce the carbon emissions okay based on that it was in news right and some uh, vehicles some buses in uh, Delhi region was using this hydrogen enriched CNG HCNG okay and now the government is promoting more HCNG vehicles right so based on that it was in current affair okay now just go through the questions the main advantage of the use of HCNG that means hydrogen enriched CNG is the elimination of carbon monoxide emissions so first statement you can see they are using a word called as elimination of carbon monoxide okay so they are saying that the total removal of carbon monoxide so it is not possible there okay it is not possible in this hydrogen enriched CNG what they are saying is if you are using this HCNG that can reduce emission of carbon monoxide up to 70 percentage okay that news is that articles news articles were saying that if you are using HCNG instead of CNGs or other fuels that will reduce the carbon monoxide emission up to 70 percentage if you are comparing that with CNG right so the, that was the main thing about HCNG adoption right so that's why first statement is wrong because first statement is saying that com complete elimination of elimination means totally removing right so that's why first statement is wrong so if the first statement is wrong we eliminated A and D we eliminated A and D now A and D we eliminated A and D now remaining is C and B okay so just for that we can just go through this fourth statement first right HCNG makes the fuel less expensive than CNG that's a wrong statement because we know that CNG is there and HCNG is there okay you know to make CNG as HCNG we have to blend we have to add hydrogen for that it will be requiring more sophisticated methods okay, some kind of other kinds of technology we will be requiring so that's somewhat expensive so if the technology is expensive there will be some amount of increase in money also right so that that means so the first statement is wrong we'll get the answer as b 2 and 3 okay so answer for this question is b 2 and 3 just go through the 2 and 3 if you don't know the fourth if you don't have that concept regarding fourth statement just go through 2 and 3 hcng as fuel reduces carbon dioxide and hydrogen emissions so why we are going for hcng instead of cng in order to reduce the pollutants obviously that will be reducing the carbon right carbon dioxide so that's been that means second statement is correct if you if we don't have any advantage what is the mean of going for other fuels right so we can in that concept we can know that second statement is correct so you'll get the answer b 2 and 3 or just go through three state third statement hydrogen up to one fifth by volume can be blended with the cng as fuel for buses okay so here they are using four buses why because it was a recent current affair in delhi region or some, uh, in north region in delhi region uh, the ucl was using or researching on the blending of this uh, hydrogen in cng and that was used in the buses and government is promoting more hcng buses there okay now the percentage of hydrogen blending is 1 by fifth of volume that means 18 to 20 percent of hydrogen will be mixed with percentage of hydrogen will be mixed with cng that's the ratio okay that is also mentioned mentioned in that news okay so if you are a regular follower of the news current affairs you might be able to answer more than 10 questions in uh, NVM science questions so answer for this question is b 2 and 3 now next question is regarding the forest cover in india and this was also current affair why because india state of forest report 2017 was re released last year india state of forest report it is prepared by forest Survey of india and that was released 2007 last year in 2017 okay so that's why we need to know the for uh, total area of forest in india and also state wise order like that okay and that report was mentioning about the uh, about 
some state is having like the Lakshadweep, Mizoram, Andaman, Ikora Islands. They are having high amount of percentage of forest cover, right? Now within that uh, state report, India state of forest report, it is saying that India is ranking in tenth in the world with the 24.4 percentage of land area under forest and tree cover. Okay, and they are they were having some tables which is mentioning about the area of forest as well as areas mangroves like that all these things dense forest like that things. Okay, by that table you can see that Lakshadweep is having high percentage of forest cover and that is around 90.33 percentage. Then below that Mizoram around 86 percentage. Then Andaman Nicobar, Arunachal Pradesh like that. And if you are going so on, Chhattisgarh it is on the 14th position. Odisha it is on the 16th position and Madhya Pradesh it is on the 19th position and Maharashtra it is on the 27th position. So, our answer for this question will be C, 3, 2, 4, 1. So, they are asking the question like this. With reference to state mentioned above, in terms of percentage of forest cover to the total area of state, which one of the following is the correct ascending order? Answer for that is 3, 2, 4, 1. That means, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. So, for in order to answer this question, you have to know the percentage of forest to govern in India and that was mentioned in the India State of Forest Report and also in news also. Now, next question is regarding a plant species called as Himalayan nettle, right. So, recently there was a growing awareness in our country about the importance of Himalayan nettle because it is found to be sustainable source. So, that was also, also current affair because the government was promoting um, cultivation of this Himalayan nettle because it can be used for a sustainable alternative for uh, the tex textile industries like that. There are lots of things which is made from the Himalayan nettle like the fabrics, okay, purses, then mufflers, dolls, suits, these kind of things can be made from the Himalayan nettle, right. So, the news was saying like this, recently Himalayan nettle, a fiber yielding plant has become an important livelihood option for people living in the remote mountain villages of Hindukush Himalaya. Why? Because there is a community called Kar community. They are producing fabrics from Himalayan nettle. And that fabric and things made from it are sold in local as well as national and international markets as high end products. Okay. And this car is on its way to become a nettle fiber production hub. Mufflers, stoles, suits, and other items of clothing, purses, bags are some of the things which the people of car are producing from this Himalayan nettle. So, the answer for this question is T, D, textile fiber. So, this Himalayan nettle is a sustainable source for textile fiber because it is a fiber yielding plant. From the definition of that Himalayan nettle itself, it is saying that it is a fiber yielding plant. So, it is used in textile fiber. Okay, so answer for that question is D, the textile fiber. Now, the last question from Indian Science is, in India, the use of car carbofuran methyl parathion forate triazophos is viewed with apprehension. These chemicals are used as, if you know about, well about pesticides, you will be knowing that there were, recently there was ban on 12 pesticides and facing out of 6, six pesticides in India. Okay. And there is a center called Center for Pesticide Suicide Prevention, right. In India, they are studying the effects of this recent ban of 20 and phasing out of 6 pesticides, right. Based on that, that was in news. And that pesticides was mainly or particularly mentioning about methyl parathion, uh, forate, phosphamidone, like that. So, answer for this question is A, pesticides in agriculture. Okay, so that is all about the questions in environmental science. So, by going through this all questions, you will be knowing that, Carnifer, it is a important thing in your UPC prelims examination, right.